talking like this Feels like you're already gone Leaving like this Maybe it's time to move on On What are you running from? I've My name is Ian Richardson and I've been playing piano, guitar and singing pretty much all my life. I remember being about two, I don't remember being two, I remember being told that I was two and uh, wanting to be, if I saw a piano I'd want to be near it straight away and play it near. So I, I, I've played all my life and I, I imagine that to continue and I can't imagine life without music. <laughs> I think from a really early, well, certainly for as long as I can remember, and from my my mum, she would tell me that um, I was forever listening to the radio, and if I saw a guitar or a piano, from as soon as I could walk, I'd be wanting to make some sort of noise with it. And noise was probably the right word. Um, yeah. So as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be. It was just in my. It was just in me. It was in my blood, really. I musically, I grew up listening to. Um, Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Fats Domino. He was a huge influence musically for me with all that kind of boogie-woogie style of music. And that's what I guess I, what inspired me to start um, playing. And then that developed into other, other, other music later on. And um, there, are, there are too many. There are many, many people. But early on, it was those people. Yeah, David, maybe David Bowie would play a part in that. And sort of... Artists from the 70s, really, mainly. Not, not so much modern stuff, but... I guess I heard people on the radio, and I thought, I want to do that. I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, so I would always want to do that, and if I heard something on the radio, I would, it, would, it would normally stop me in my tracks, and I'd have to listen to it. And I could never understand why nobody else seemed to be listening to it. Like, I would, like, can't you hear that? Can't you hear the magic in that? Can you? I, I still remember where I was when I first heard Bohemian Rhapsody on my bike when I was five years old, playing in a shop, and I had to stay there and listen to the whole song. And, and John Lennon was very inspiring to me. Um, still is. Yeah, his music's very. His lyrics are still well. They're more poignant than ever. So. Um, I kind of, when I was eight, I, I could already play a little bit by the time I was eight, but my, my, I end, there was a piano in the pub that I lived in, um, and we had, my dad organised for Mr Grumpy, Mr, Mr Gullock, he was actually called, but he was quite grumpy and normally drunk. He'd turn up in, a, in an orange Austin Allegro and nearly always drive into the side of the house, and I think that's how he realised he'd got to us. He'd, he'd arrived... He hit the side of the house, and there was, over the years, few couple of years of him coming, there was a line of render missing, bumper, uh, Austin Allegro bumper height, along the side of our house. house. And um, he, was, he was good, he was very traditional, um, very good pianist, but um, not a very good teacher. So um, I ended up being quite scared of him. Um, in but invariably, I didn't practice enough. I was more interested in playing by ear even then. So the, the scales and learning to read music I, wasn't interesting to me, but um, I guess I was a little bit lazy in that regard. I wanted to learn by ear. So he, I had lessons for a couple of years and then he became ill and he, didn't, he couldn't come anymore. But so then from then on I taught myself. So in two different comprehensive schools I, I went to, I did music and they couldn't figure out that I could do all this stuff on the piano, but I could barely read music. And it used to frustrate, particularly Mr. Gale, 
um, used to frustrate him so much that one day he told me I'd be a very intelligent dustman and I'd never learn to play properly. Um, I kind of set out to show, prove that I, you, you don't have to read music, you can still write good music, you can still play good music if you're not classically trained. Over years I've learned to be able to listen to a song and almost play it immediately and I, not always, but quite often I'd like say the lead singer of the band would suddenly tell me an hour before someone's wedding that they want the first dance on the piano to be sung by me and played by me and I'm already left the house. I'm on my way there and I've got no chance of being near a piano and in an hour's time I'm going to play it to the bride and groom. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I would end up again learning it in my head in the car on the way there. Yeah, and I'd be, I'd be well, obviously very safely driving with two hands, but in my head I'm, I'm playing and learning it in my head. And I've kind of done that quite often. You know, with, with the, we're all musicians and we're all, I don't know, we're not very organised most of the time. <laughs> You'll just go, oh, I forgot, I forgot to tell you this. We've got to play whatever for the first dance. And I've, I've not, it's not gone badly wrong yet. <laughs> I was always in, in and out of bands, really, because bands are difficult. There's always egos involved. There's always somebody's better than somebody else. Someone's got all the ideas and no one else can have any ideas. Or It's very difficult sometimes, so I'd leave bands quite regularly because I just wanted to have fun. I didn't want to... Um, it was just about enjoying music for me. So uh, I was in a band. The first good band I was in that we had quite a lot of publicity it was a band called Something Nasty in the Woodshed and we were we were booked to play with a band called Jethro Tull um, on, a, on a floating stage on a lake so I got to know I met them and got to know um, Martin Barr the guitarist quite well and he was very helpful to me early on and very encouraging and it was through him I think I ended up writing more songs because he was Basically, the attitude that you can just achieve what you want to achieve. You just keep doing it. You, you only don't do it. The day you stop is when you've, you should just keep going with whatever it is that you love um, and, and don't stop. So then I joined, I was with them for a while. I can't remember when I left. But the, I think the band just broke up. Um, and I joined Sweet Black Angels in 2012. Um, I, I was asked to join because they were supporting Noel Gallagher at the O2. Um, in fact, I lie, I'm not supporting. The after, doing Noel Gallagher's after show party after he played the O2, but in the O2. So I had a message saying, could I join? I knew the band already. I'd recorded on an album with them before and I, they were friends. And I was in Spain at the time on holiday and I had a message saying, could I join the Sweet Black Angels? Um, because we're due to play for Noel Gallagher in two weeks time. And I still had another week left in Spain. So anyone in their right mind would say, absolutely not. But obviously, clearly, I'm not in my right mind. So, uh, so being me, I said, I meant to say no, but yes came out. And I, yes, of course I can. Of course I can do that. And a um, mixture of excitement and absolute fear. Like, what have I done? I'm going to play in the O2 for Noel Gallagher. I don't know any of the set, and it's in two weeks' time, and a week of that I'm spending in Spain. So I spent every evening um, imagining the keyboard in front of me, which I'm, I, I do anyway, and listening. Luckily, it was all on Spotify, so I was able to, in my head, just work out different songs and make some notes um, to the point where it was okay, it was all right. Got back and had a few practices with, with the band. Um, and it was all fine until we drove towards the O2 and it came into view as we came into London. <clears throat> and I've never been so sick in my life, petrified, that I was, what, what we were about to do. Because I still, the rest of the band had played the songs for years. I'd, I'd been playing them for 10 minutes. So I wasn't overly confident. But there we go, they didn't kick me out of the band. I couldn't have been that band, bad. <laughs> so 
so that, that that point they had quite a good run the band were being were supporting lots of different people so they supported this just before i joined us they supported the specials um a band called jet black three um all in london um the level is countless times so we we're like know them quite well and then i joined and played with the levelers played at their festival um, beautiful days in in near honiton yeah, so it was Noel Gallagher, a band called the Blue Tones, which I kind of grew up listening to. We played with them. Um, a band called Cast, um, John Power, who I also grew up listening to. And it's great to meet these people that you, you kind of spent your life listening to. Well, the band formed really, they formed like in the 90s. They've been going, it's, it's, going, it's been going for 25 years, the band. And uh, they formed in the 90s at school. Um, and funny now, the songwriter Scott is an incredible songwriter. Wasn't he? Well, he was in the band originally, but they kicked him out because he, I don't know, if they fell out with him and they kicked him out of the band. And it was just them with no songs. So they had to kind of like get him back in again. And uh, they've been together ever since. And um, yeah, so I, I, so I joined in 2012, but the band were a guitar based band till that point, which they still largely are, but they've added the keys as well. Yeah, so what was it? Only a few weeks ago, our dishwasher broke. So, uh, Jill, um, my wife, Rosie's mum, found one on, on one of the, I don't know, sites, and it was in Tiverton. So I went to get this thing, and there was a keyboard for sale as well, in, from this like community hall where they were selling things off because it was closing. And uh, I said, oh, you've got the keyboard as well. And he said, oh, yeah, we're selling that as well. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a keyboard player, so that's quite interesting to me. It turned out the keyboard wasn't, I didn't buy it, it wasn't very good, but it led us on to talking about the fact that he had a band called The Karma. Um, and he said, oh, we've got a band and we are looking for a keyboard player. Um, so I ended up joining the band at that, at that time because I went to buy a dishwasher, which is kind of how random life is sometimes, I suppose. And the dishwasher, used to belong to Cleo Lane, is one of the biggest jazz singers of all time. And it used to be her dishwasher. And the other guy in the band used to be in the band as well. Um, and well, was, was there, also did a lot of things helping them out around the house. We'd load that same dishwasher. So we have Cleo Lane's dishwasher in our kitchen at the moment. Yeah, the dishwasher band. Yeah, so I guess what, in one way, helped me musically was and I guess it's helped me write songs as well, was uh, my relationship with my dad was, was not great. We, we, we didn't have a good relationship. He, he, um... So this piano was in the farthest room away from the rest of the house. <clears throat> so I figured if I was in there playing the piano, I couldn't be in trouble anywhere else um, for just being there. So I took myself out of that environment all the time. Um, I learnt to, I had to do that. So I would, the only place to go in the middle of the countryside was either to go and pinch some crisps behind the bar and the, you know, 10 year old boy, you know, who lived in a pub, maybe sample the odd sneaky little drink. But I'd go to the piano and that's where I'd be. And I'd, that's where I'd be after school. I guess it was, it was the, my Xbox of the time. And I'm so glad it was, yeah. And it's, in, it's those years of persevering with teaching myself how to play, to play by listening to lots of old records and yeah, it developed. But if I hadn't had that kind of need to be away from anywhere he was, which doesn't sound very good, but that's how it was, um, maybe I wouldn't have developed as well as I, as, as, as I have. Stand up for falling down Can't 
Stop my head from spinning round Saw an old friend yesterday Said that you had gone away Gonna start a life for you Wish that I had seen you To wish you luck in all you do The only good things happen to you May only good things happen to you Good things happen to you. May only good things happen. Start to cry, but then I laugh. Smiling at the photograph of you and me down by the key. Tried to push me in the seat. You said that I could do with the bad. You said this town was too small with nothing much to do. May only good things happen to you. May only good things happen. To you. May only good things happen to you. May only good things happen. Thank you.